Now, which of the following processes which of the following processes are for observational learning process proposed by Bandura? So basically Bandura proposed which of the following processes for observational learning observational learning so uh, the correct answer is a c d e attention retention behavioral re rehearsal rehearsal behavioral behavioral rehearsal and motivation a c d e not adaptation attention where the observer focuses on the model behavior and its consequence consequences retention refers to the observer's ability to remember the behavior for future reference behavioral rehearsal which involves the observer attempting to reproduce the behavior that was observed this rehearsal can also can be influenced by factors such as observers self-efficacy belief in their ability to perform the behavior the availability of resources needed to perform the behavior and the feedback received during the rehearsal process. Finally, the fourth process is motivation, which refers to the observer's drive to learn and perform the behavior. Uh, by understanding these processes, educators and others can design effective learning experiences that maximize the potential for observer observational learning to occur. Bandura's model of observational learning emphasizes the importance of attention, retention, behavioral rehearsal, and motivation in the learning process. Now, first statement in adolescence period, foreclosure refers to the commitment with ongoing through the period of crisis. Incorrect. In adolescent in adolescence period, mortarium is the period without going through the period of crisis. That is also correct, incorrect. Foreclosure is the concept of Eric Erickson's theory of psych psycho psychosocial development. Theory of psychosocial development, which describes the period of adolescence as a time of identity exploration and formation. So he explores the identity and form formulates the identity that is the period of adolescence according to Eric Erickson's theory of psychosocial development. Foreclosure refers to a situation in which an individual has made a commitment to an identity without undergoing the period of crisis or exploration that typically precedes such a commitment. So before he commits, uh, precedes the commitment, before he um, commits, uh, he has not gone a period of crisis without undergoing the period of crisis crisis so not going through but without should have been foreclosure and foreclosure can be problematic because it can limit an individual's opportunities for personal growth and self discovery Without exploring different options and considering different perspectives, individuals may miss out on important experiences and fail to develop a sense of autonomy and independence. In uh, so, um, the in the second statement in adolescence period, moratorium is the period without going through the period of crisis. In Erickson's theory, moratorium is the period of identity exploration and crisis that typically occurs during adolescence. So it is uh, the period of identity exploration and crisis mortarium during this period individuals are actively exploring different options and trying out different roles and identities in order to find a sense of purpose and direction in life for example a teenager might experiment with different hobbies interests and social groups in order to figure out what they enjoy and what kind of person they want to be this period of exploration can be challenging and stressful as individuals confront difficult questions about who they are, who they 
want to become. The process of mor moratorium is important because it allows individuals to develop a sense of autonomy and independence as well as a more complex and nuanced understanding of themselves and the world around them. Through exploration and crisis, individuals can develop a sense of identity that is based on their own values, interests, and experiences rather than simply adopting the expectations and values of others. Conclusion Foreclosure refers to a commitment without going through the period of crisis and moratorium refers to the period of crisis and exploration that typically occurs during adolescence. So that's foreclosure and that is moratorium. moratorium. Now what is the process of observation scaffolding and increasingly independent practice through which a learner can advance towards expertise? That's the cognitive apprenticeship. A learning approach is a method or strategy for teaching and acquiring knowledge or skills. It typically involves a set of principles, techniques, or tools designed to facilitate learning and improve learning outcomes. Cognitive, cognitive apprenticeship is a learning approach that involves a skilled practitioner, that is the master, guiding a novice learner through a process of observation, scaffolding, and increasingly independent practice to help them acquire the knowledge, skills, and habits necessary for expertise. Some learning approaches related to cognitive apprenticeship approach are scaffolding, involves providing support and guidance to a learner as they work towards mastering a skill or concept. Modeling involves demonstrating a skill or behavior for a learner to observe and imitate. Reflection involves encouraging learners to think about the eval uh, think and uh, think about and evaluate their own learning experiences and strategies. Coaching involves providing feedback and guidance to help a learner improve their performance and reach their goals. Mentoring involves building a relationship between an expert experienced practitioner, the mentor, and the novice learner in which the mentor provides guidance and support to help the learner develop their expertise. And problem-based learning involves presenting learners with real-world problems or scenarios to solve in order to encourage critical thinking and problem-solving skills. Adaptation is a process by which an organism modifies its behavior or structure in response to change in the environment in order to better survive and thrive. Modification involves changing an existing system or process in order to improve its performance or meet new requirements. In learning and education, modification can involve changing teacher, uh, teaching strategies or materials to better suit the need and abilities of learners. Concept mapping is a visual learning tool that involves creating a diagram or map to represent the relationships between different concepts or ideas. Concept maps can help learners organize and connect information, identify patterns and themes, and gain a deeper understanding of complex topics. Now, arrange the five phases of con constructivist learning approach in a sequence so that the first is engage the second is explore the third is explain the fourth is elaborate and the fifth is evaluate so engage explore explain elaborate and evaluate those are the five phases of constructivist learning approach engage explore explain elaborate evaluate engage explore explain elaborate evaluate Engage involves introducing the learner to the topic and generating interest and curiosity. Explore uh, involves providing opportunities for the learner to explore the topic through inquiry, discovery, and experimentation. Explain involves providing opportunities for the learners to explain their understanding of the topic to others and receive feedback. Elaborate involves providing opportunities for the learner to expand and deepen their understanding on the topic through application and extension of knowledge. Evaluate involves providing opportunities to the learner to evaluate their own learning, receive feedback, and reflect on their understanding of the topic. SWAYAM is a program initiated by Government of India designed to achieve what? Cardinal principles of education policy. Three. Three education cardinal principles. 
three cardinal principles of educational policy education policy swayam is a program initiated by government of india to achieve three cardinal pr uh, principles of education policy with access equity and quality access equity and quality now a researcher wants uh, the research question to be explicit an explicit research question should be focused specific and answerable through empirical evidence other characteristics uh, characteristics of research questions include relevance research questions should be relevant to the research problem the research objectives and the research cont context feasibility research questions should be feasible and realistic given the available time resources and expertise significance research questions should address important issues problems or gaps in knowledge and have the potential to make a valuable contribution to the field originality research questions should be original and innovative and build on ex existing knowledge or challenge existing assumptions clarity research questions should be clear and well defined so that they can be easily understood and communicated to others now symbolic interactionism is a theory symbolic interactionism Symbolic interactionism is a social theory that emphasizes the role of symbols and interactions in shaping human behavior and society. According to this theory, people interpret and give meaning to the world around them through social interactions and this shared understanding forms the basis for social structures and institutions. Symbolic interactionism has been applied in various fields including sociology, psychology and communication studies to understand social phenomena such as identity, power and culture. in research a, a review is a critical analysis of the existing literature review is a critical analysis on a particular topic or research question it involves identifying analyzing and synthesizing the relevant research studies and other sources of information such as books articles and reports a hypothesis is a tentative ex explanation and prediction about a phenomena or relationship between the variables based on existing theory or prior observations it is a testable statement that can be verified or refuted through empirical research now the process of deduction in research has the following steps what which are they process of deduction in research so theory hypothesis and data collection data analysis findings confirmation or rejection of hypothesis these are the three steps in deduction in research theory hypothesis and data collection data analysis findings confirmation and rejection of hypothesis not photocopying the research material not preparing the index Deductive research is a process of developing a theory, formulating a hypothesis based on uh, the theory, collecting data to test hy the hypothesis, analyzing the data to confirm or reject the hypothesis, and revising the theory if necessary. The process of deduction in research involves the following steps: theory. In this step, the researcher develops a theory or a conceptual framework based on existing knowledge or observations. Hypothesis and data collection. The researcher formulates a testable hypothesis based on the theory and collects data through various methods such as surveys experiments or observations data analysis findings confirmation or rejection of hypothesis the researcher analyzes the collected data using statistical methods and evaluates the findings to confirm or reject the hypothesis if the hypothesis is rejected the researcher revises the theory and formulates a new hypothesis for further testing Photocopying the research material and preparing the index are not the steps in the process of deduction in research while photocopying and preparing an index may be necessary for organizing and analyzing research material they are not part of the deductive research process itself Now statement 1 middle range theories are the focus of empirical inquiry That's correct middle range theories are the focus of empirical inquiry second statement unlike grand theories middle range theories function in restricted domain that is also correct 
middle range theories act in restricted domain now uh, middle range theories are the focus of empirical inquiry of the of empirical inquiry it suggests that middle range theories are theories that are based on empirical research which means they are developed by gathering and analyzing data from observations and experiments these theories are narrower in scope than grand theories and they focus on explaining specific phenomena within a particular domain or field of study that's um, a correct statement then now uh, the second unlike grand theories middle range theories function in a restricted domain that is correct uh, this statement suggests that middle range theories are more specific in their focus than grand theories they are designed to explain phenomena within a particular domain or field of study and they do not attempt to provide a comprehensive explanation for of a broader range of phenomena now first statement in the systematic sampling one can choose units directly from the sampling frame without opting for a table of random numbers in systematic sampling systematic uh, random sampling one can choose units directly from sampling frame without opting for the table of random numbers that's correct the second statement the simple random sample is the mo most primary form of non probability sampling that's not correct systematic sampling is a probability sampling method that involves selecting units from a list of sampling frame using a systematic pattern such as every kth unit this method does not require a table of random numbers to select units as the sampling interval can be determined based on the size of the sampling frame and desired frame si uh, desired sample size this method does not require a table of random numbers to select units as the sampling interval can be determined based on the size of the sampling frame and the desired sample size and a systematic sampling can be more efficient than rand simple random sampling as it requires less time and effort to select the sample all right now uh, the simple ra random sample is most primary form of non probability sample is not correct simple random sampling is a type of probability sampling method not a non probability sampling method in simple random sampling each unit in the sampling frame has an equal chance of being selected for the sample and the selection of each unit is independent of the other units non probability sampling methods on the other hand do not involve random selection and do not guarantee every that every unit in the sampling frame has an equal chance of being selected now to gain a good vocabulary for effective communication learners should depend on their own initiatives uh, effective communication involves using appropriate language tone and nonverbal cues to convey the intended message to gain a good vocabulary for effective communication learners should take their own initiatives this means that learners should actively seek or uh, uh, seek out opportunities to learn new words and use them in context they can use they can read extensively look up new words in a dictionary use vocabulary building apps and engage in conversation with others to practice using new words relying solely on classroom instruction may not be sufficient to build a robust vocabulary for effective communication now what are uh, are made at the level of connotation in communication value judgments value judgments are subjective assessment of the worth significance or morality of something and they are often made at 
the level of connotation in communication. Connotation refers to the emotional or cultural association that a word or phrase carries beyond its literal definition and it can influence how the message is received and interpreted. Value judgments may be expressed through the use of certain words or phrases that carry connotations of praise or criticism, approval or disapproval and other subjective evaluations. Now, uh, false perceptions refer to mistaken or inaccurate beliefs or interpretations of reality. That's false perception. And deceitful creation refers to intentionally misleading or falsifying information or images. Intentionally misleading or falsifying information or images. That's deceitful creation. False perception, mistaken or inaccurate belief of or interpretation of reality. Now, which of the following are the characteristics of virtual interaction? So that's B, D, and E. Uh, characteristics of virtual interaction it is a spatial, it's not spatial. Mutual presence is redundant, that is. That mutual presence is not required. You don't need to be mutually present at the same time. I think so. Let's see. And virtual interaction through some system is asynchronous. You know, not at the same time. Like email. And uh, time zone constraints are abundant within a small country. That's not correct. Virtual interaction is a spatial, uh, is a spatial as it is not limited to physical space or geographical location. Mutual presence is not necessary communication as communication can happen asynchronously, asynchronously through some system, right? Virtual interaction refers to the communication and interaction that occurs through technology mediated channels such as video conferencing, instant messaging, social media, email and other digital platforms. It allows people to communicate and interact with each other in real time, regardless of their physical location. Now, some of the characteristics of virtual interaction include a spatial mutual presence is redundant in virtual interaction people do not need to be physically present in the same location to communicate and interact with each other time zone constraints are abundant within a small country while a virtual interaction allows people to connect across different time zones it can also create challenges when people are located in the same geographic region but operate on different schedules Now, virtual interaction through some system is asynchronous. Virtual interaction through a system can indeed be asynchronous, meaning that participants do not need to be present simultaneously for communication to take place. Okay. Now, first statement, John Fisk does not support the way in which the term myth is used by Roland Barthes. That's correct. And Barth's link and Barth links myth with a capitalist social order, which is a statement of falsehood. So Barth links myth with a capitalist social order. That is also correct. This can be verified. Uh, so John Fisk uh, does not support the way in which m the term myth is used by Lo Roland Barth. This is correct uh, statement and can be verified by studying the work of John Fisk and Roland Barth. John Fisk in his book Understanding Popular Culture criticizes Barth using the term uh, myth in his book Mythologies. Fisk argues that Barth fails to acknowledge the role of audience interpretation in the creation of meaning in popular culture. The second statement, Barth links myth with a capitalist social order, which is a statement of falsehood. Uh, in mythologies, Barth uses the concept of myth to analyze the way in which bourgeois society naturalizes and 
universalizes its own values and interests and he argues that this process serves to reinforce the dominant ideology therefore barth uses uh, the term myth is linked to the critique of capitalist society now in communication paradigms are the basis of uh, syntagms paradigms are the basis of syntagms syntagms are the combination of words or phrases that make a meaningful sentence in communication syntagms are used to convey a message by arranging words or phrases in particular order which is made possible by paradigms paradigms are the set of words or phrases that can be used in a particular position in a sentence numbers numerals are used to represent numbers in communication and they are not related to paradigms syntax refers to the rules that govern the arrangement of words in a sentence in a sentence syntax punctuations punctuation marks are used to clarify the meaning of a sentence or to indicate pauses and breaks in speech now which fallacy is committed in the following argument grades are awarded to a student are not truly reflective of the subtle nuances of the student's performance therefore students work should not be, should not be graded at all that's the fallacy of equivocation now which of the following statements are logically equivalent logically equivalent no tigers are non mammals no mammals so tigers as in to say tigers are mammals right all non mammals are non tigers all tigers are mammals so a c and d no tigers are non mammals which gives the sense of tigers are tigers are mammals right and all non mammals are non tigers which again gives the sense that tigers are mammals and the third all tigers are mammals gives the same sense that tigers are mammals so a c and d a c and d <coughs> now if the statement all tigers are mammals is given as true which of the following statements could be immediately inferred to be false all tigers are mammals all tigers are mammals is true right so what would be false would be this some mammals are not tigers some tigers are not mammals S some tigers are not mammals and uh, uh, if that were to be true then this would also be true i'm i'm sorry if this is true then they cannot both be false but they can both be true at the same time that is to say that some are as and some are not so some tigers are not mammals and some tigers are mammals a and c only no tigers are mammals no tigers are mammals okay what would be false right so if this is true then this will this is false and if this is false then this will make this to be false and that is the reason why no tigers are mammals and some tigers are not mammals is the correct option